Reader's Digest version of my life. <laughs> and most people say I learned to read by the light of the police helicopter <laughs> searchlight. <laughs> I was going to uh, public schools. Uh, I was kind of this kid that grew up with a single parent. And um, she would always say, okay, there's a lot of mayonnaise in the refrigerator. Make a sandwich. <laughs> I was the kid that was always at other kids' houses, and the parents would always say, doesn't he have a home? So I was always like on the streets. I had a lot of freedom to do an awful lot of different things. And I kind of, I, I was the library. I went to the library all the time. And originally I went to the library and I thought, okay, I'm gonna read from A to Z. So Margaret noticed that I was reading everything with the letter A and then I was going into the letter B and, and you just, she goes, what are you doing? I said, well, I wanna, I wanna read everything. She goes, you're going about it in the wrong way. Start with the Greeks and work your way all the way so she kind of guided me along uh, my, in my education, in, uh, in art, in a lot of ways as well. And then in middle school, I went to this high, uh, junior high school, it was called Stevenson Junior High School. And my first introduction to a bohemian was my ceramics teacher. She called me after class. You know, you're doing these elongated mats in my class, and they, they're mats, right? And, yeah, they're mats. And they have these African patterns all over them. And then you take them home, and you never bring them back. What are you doing with them? Well, I'm burying them all over East LA. Because in the future, I want an archaeologist to find them and wonder how the hell did they get there. I have no romantic notions about high school. That was like hell for me. Uh, in high school, I wanted to be Marcello Mastriani. Uh, I wanted the world to be like La Dolce Vita, or Eight and a Half, or some Fellini movie. But in high school, um, I met three other people. And there was uh, Harry Gamboa, Willie Hedon, and uh, Patsy Valdez. And the four of us, right after high school, went into a garage, and instead of coming out rock musicians, we came out artists. Everything was like brand new. The world was our oyster, as they say. And we would, you know, exchange ideas. Do you know, every time we take a step, we're defying gravity? Wow, cool. <laughs> you know, all of these kinds of notions about everything in the planet was, was coming up. Or, do you know that actually this planet is a rock? Now, when I die, I'm going to be on, the, on this rock. And everybody in the past that dies is on this rock. And in the future, when people die, they're going to be on this rock. This rock is going through space, and no one is driving it. It's like time for a group hug here.
Tormenta is Spanish for storm. Sort of. Her mythical name echoes of storms, the catastrophes of vanity. But not storms produced by weather, or even metaphorical storms. Rather, storms like the ones that lived and intoned inside of Emily Dickinson. Voice. Tormenta has a voice. In Gronk and Joseph Julian's Gonzalez Tormenta Cantara, Tormenta sang in tune to Gronk's brushstrokes. Longing. Longing is Tormenta's first language. Tormenta's dialogue is between herself and her image. That is why she is silent in the realm of the visual. Memory. Tormenta evokes memory. The memories of so many screen goddesses. She lives in this ambience of memories. And by looking at her, so do we. Interior. Interiors are Tormenta's metaphorical geography. She is pure design in the spirit of the modern. Her form contains all that is hidden, unseen, in shadow. Just bricks on the floor Solid ground for standing When we kick down the door And it leaves my heart room For expanding on you It gets to me But you don't have to wait for me Because I'm already yours Yeah, tell me about your life I'd like to hear that story again yeah, especially the part about your vanity yeah. Honest words are like August thirds They just both come maybe once in a year And keeping your opinions to a quiet little hush It's like brushing your teeth with a razor and Shaving with a toothbrush Just leaves your heart room for exploding all over me And then it gets to you But you don't have to wait for me Cause I'm already yours Yeah, tell me about your life i like to hear that story once time Yeah, especially the part about your vanity Other lies are like butterflies in fact, Willie was the first one to actually ask me if I wanted to do a mural because they were going to have these murals in Estrada Courts, which was this low-income housing project in East Los Angeles. And when he said, would you like to do a mural with me? I ran home and I looked up the word mural, mm -hmm. and then I ran back and said, yes, I can do it. 